if you can think about the time in your life when you've been most distressed and can't see a way out, and if you can think about from that place, what was the most helpful to you? What actually helped you take the first step out of that place? It probably wasn't a doctor, it probably wasn't a pill or a surgery. It was some skill or strength that you found within you. So what this does is help us build those tools that you already have, those strengths that you already have in a much more proactive way so they're more readily available to you. They're at, you don't wait till you're in a crisis mode, but you can use this every day to help, whether it's you're suffering with chronic pain or depression or whatever issue you're dealing with. The power of these approaches can help you. I was in the Army, I was 82nd Airborne Division, and I served over in Iraq at the very first push back in 2003. I was an 88 Mike motor transport operator. We drove the 5,000 gallon. Uh, Vietnam, 1967, 1968. And I was involved in Gulf War. I served in South Baghdad from April 2006 to April 2007. It was hell. You know, uh, yeah, uh, going on patrol is not knowing, you know, if you were going to get hit. Mentally, it took a toll. Physically, it took a toll. Having a problem with myself. I got a whole bunch of problems. I from A to Z. Once I got out of the military, I wasn't able to readjust back into society. It was one time that I tried to kill myself. I would literally be tense, stressed. I was kind of depressed. Headaches. I had a lot of anxiety and anger issues that I was dealing with. One of the things that I, I really believe and uh, I wanted to just really emphasize is how important uh, alternate, alternate options are. Uh, for medication. No one has ever died of an overdose of Tai Chi, but we've had veterans who've died of an overdose of medications. So it's huge. This is a big deal and it really does help. The most important part about it is that you have a choice to how you think about your life, how you think about your scenarios, your conditions that you're dealing with. All you have to do is take the first step towards that future and open your heart and open your mind and accept what has been done, what's taken place and what's already over with and where you want to go from here. The, the beauty of this type of focus is that it's available to you at all times and it's available to you at any time and it just takes training and for me, it's just been a reapplication of my military training to focus on my breathing. All mindfulness takes place through the breath. And once you recognize the power that you have implicit to yourself at all times, no matter what, you then apply that training. So it's the same kind of thing as when the military teaches you the value of discipline or the value of integrity, and then it shows you its utility. So that's the thing it's uh, seeing the utility now in the military they teach you the utility of breathing for shooting a weapon and that's that's great training you immediately see the connection you see its usefulness and you apply it immediately the difference with this type of breathing technique is that it's not geared towards precision at a target 300 yards down range it's geared towards the target inside you and the target inside you is could be, you could say, your central nervous system. I have seen, um, in the year that I've been here, huge transformations for these guys. Um, one of the most powerful moments in my life was one, uh, one soldier a couple weeks ago said that when he was exhaling, he could feel the anger just leaving. And it was just this deep sort of breathing, being present. Um, I have zero... Uh, Basically what my job is to offer the tools and then they take it on and they breathe and they move and they come back to the present and it's been um, a huge passion for me. I want it to grow. I want it to get bigger. I want to be out of the hospital. I want it to be um, you know, in the airports. I want it to be everywhere where there's access for these, these vets to be able to go. I want it to be for the wives because it's happening, you know, especially with the PTSD. It's not just the soldiers. It's the families. It's the children. It's, you know, it's, it's hard for these men and women to come back and not have something to do to 
um, kind of be in that meditative state, be in that present. There's one thing that I remember in yoga was the channel, the energy, which is you close your eyes, you put your hands together like this, like you're about to pray. You put your thumb dead center to your chest, and you just close your eyes, you take a deep breath in, in your nose and out your mouth, like, and you hold it for like five seconds and then you let it out through your mouth. And you do that a couple times, and as you're doing that, you pretty much want to think in your mind about something real good, like, uh, say for instance, I like the beach and I like water. So you pretty much have to think about something that you really like, like water, and you just think about water, being on the ocean, thinking of the the sounds of the water, the motions of the water, and you just keep breathing in, and breathing out. And when you breathe out, you just let it all out. Like, like you, when you breathe in, it's like breathing all the breath in to your head, and then we let it out, just release it all the way out to your feet. And do that a couple times, maybe like five or six times, and then open your eyes, and then you feel yourself much ease. Like especially you want to do it like if you're feeling sad or if you're feeling tense or a lot of us soldiers have anxiety. We have a tendency, they say we have hypertension. So we get started on a lot of things. If you feel yourself about to lose control, just do that a couple times and then open your eyes and you should feel better. I would close my eyes and I would still hear everything around but uh, I, was, I was able just to hear it, but yet not process it, so to speak. I was able to feel tingling, you know, in my toes and then up through my legs and then all the way, like, through my fingertips, through my hands, you know, all the way up to my head. And it was, it was exhilarating. Uh, I don't know, um, I kind of like to, you know, relate it to, I don't know, like a drug. It's like a natural drug within yourself. You know, to help, you know, to help you, you know, get through things, you know, help you face the world, you know, be able to deal with normal everyday stress instead of like hiding away from it, you know, and uh, it's like, you know, and, and like the part where, where, you know, where your, where your mind just creates just like, you know, a beautiful, a beautiful sight where you put yourself at, uh, you know, just like nothing around, it's like, you know, I was able to find that peace within myself. To experience a calm, a peace, my breathing, it was amazing. The correlation between our, our minds and our bodies, it was just it's, it's, it was just amazing. I, it's, it's hard to really even describe the, the, the peace, the relaxation, the clarity that I had. Well, it's just, uh, what these exercises does is it allows you to focus on something else. You know, it takes you to like your happy spot or something. You know, take your, take your mind off what you're dealing with, you know. If you would have asked me five years ago, I would have told you to go F yourself because I'm not going to try it, you know, because I think that's like all hippie stuff, but I was a doubter too. You know, I doubted all that. And finally, you know, uh, it, was, it was just a last ditch effort. And f fortunately, it's been, it's been really helping me out. You know, I'm, I'm more active, I'm more social. I, I go and talk to people and Especially with those vets, you know, that I meet like on the street or at school, you know, I, I ask them, hey, you know, have you been experiencing any kind of any kind of like issues, any kind of problems? All of them say no. We all do, because we all don't want to have that kind of uh, uh, that title, you know, of, uh, of somebody with PTSD, because you know, the general public, civilians, the people that never served, they look at us like you know we're infectious or like we're going to kill them which is, I think is, but, you know, and still I, still, I, I, I still face those problems every day, but it doesn't bother me like it used to, you know, like, you know, like when, I, when I first started, you know, because, you know, like, through treatments, you know, there was a, there was a lot of trial, trials and errors, but, you know, I, I just have to realize that, you know, dealing with PTSD is something that I've been, you know, that I've been, that I have to deal with. I just can't shy away from it. 
you know, so I use these, so I use these different techniques, you know, to be able to put myself in a way to actually deal with society. You start out with a set of movements and a set of techniques and it regulates and flows the chi in your body. The chi is also known as energy in Chinese medicine. That's what chi is, it's called energy. And what it does is it filtrates through your body and it gives you, it, 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 in essence it uplifts you. It gives you a, a, a refreshing, a, a, another way of trying to basically recharge your system. It was just something different that just calmed me down considerably. You know? It was just, it was a nice feeling because it was like the energy in my body was being transmitted to a, a, a more even keel. Um, physically, I was in good shape. Mentally, I thought I was in good shape. And now, um, energetically, I was getting in great shape. You know, I was skeptical if this was going to work. I mean, I had read up on it. I've seen a video or two on YouTube about the Jigong study, but I wasn't quite sure if this was going to be beneficial for me because I suffered from it for such a long period of time. I just wasn't sure. But after the first session, I was a believer. Um, it also helps you deal with um, different gates or keys um, that helps uh, your part, different parts of your body. Um, I dealt with a lot of um, respiratory problems with uh, rhinitis. Uh, one of the keys was actually um, going to the middle of your meaty part of your hand and you rotate it five minutes, both hands, and it also st uh, stimulates your, your lungs. If you are in this black area, you know, that's the one thing that's pretty neat about all this stuff is that you get to recognize the temporal or the temporary nature of your thoughts, of your feelings. You get to see them as a flow, as a rhythm. And if you can recognize that that rhythm's going to change, sometimes it's going to go up, sometimes it's going to go down, but it's going to change. And when you reapply your training, that change can get smoother. So you don't go up so high, you don't drop so far. So you don't have to feel like this feeling that I have will never ever end and I'll never not be on the other side of this. You don't have to feel that way. Is it easy sometimes to remember these techniques? It's not always easy. You know, sometimes you do flim off the end and you say, oh wait a minute, let me reel myself back in. That's the key objective, reeling yourself back in. Okay, just like you cast your line out, if you go fishing, you might miss a spot you got to reel it back in and get back to the spot. But the key objective is you have to know you missed it. It's calming when you're, when you're breathing and your body and I don't think I have the right words to explain this, but when everything is in sync, it's spectacular. It's just an hour, but that hour lets you, keeps you going till the next week. And, uh, that's why I enjoyed it. It's, uh, uh, what, what I'm going to tell you is, uh, listen, it's working for me, and it's working for a lot of friends, veteran. Just go and try. Just, just go and try. So it's not a matter of just doing it at home. It's a matter of doing it anytime you feel tense. So you, you do take the tools with you and use them constantly, and it helps me go forth. If you're physically capable of making it happen, try it. After the session, first session, I guarantee you, you'll be sold. Because what you're doing is you're moving your energy. It's all about you. There's no additives to this, it's just you. Just in case for all the female veterans that's out there that is scared or pretty much is closed-minded to the opportunity of doing yoga, please, whatever you do, just open your mind and be open to the opportunity just to try. All you have to do is take the first step towards that future and open your heart and open your mind and accept what has been done, what's taken place and what's already over with and where you want to go from here. And the first step is yours. I just want to tell everybody, uh, namaste, which I learned in yoga, which means peace be with you. The veterans who begin to do this in their lives and make it real and partner with us in making it better and better and better 
are a part of not only, I hope, improving their own sense of health and well-being, but will have a ripple effect as we bring this out to other veterans around the country and really model this for America. I think that our healthcare system right now is quite broken and people are suffering and we have this tremendous opportunity starting with the every individual person and veteran to learn and show how it can be different. So I just thank the veterans once again for a different kind of service to their country that's about the transformation of healthcare.